You know the story by now. Stalin ate all the bread and drank all the water from Ukraine, resulting in a genocide that kills millions of Ukrainians and medically did not affect any other people or region, like Volga and Kazakhstan, which was only contained to the Soviet Union and definitely did not affect other countries like Bulgaria, Romania, and Poland. I mean, look how many countries recognized the Avanta genocide and how many movies were made about it. It has to be real, right? No, not this time. It's totally made up. Pure fiction. The truth is, since 1842, the Tsar's government of Russia had famines every six years on average. And the situation got worse because the peasants didn't have enough land to produce the food that the country needed. Which continued in the Soviet Union also. Like the Soviet famine of 1921 to 1922. And I'm not denying any of the famines here. I'm here to prove that the Ukrainian famines of 1942 and 43 was just a famine and not a genocide. According to the number that the Ukrainians give, it killed from 5 to 10 million people. Yet a reminder, Ukraine's population in 1926 was 29 million people, of which Ukrainians were 23 million. According to the statistics, the average amount of death in Ukraine at the time was 500,000 people a year, while in 1942 it increased, and in 1943 to over 1 million. That means even by this data, we see that we can't even say that 3 million people died in the famine. Because during the two-year period, Ukraine lost, for multiple reasons, 2 million people. And that's just 500,000 more than the usual. And Ukrainians could possibly say that those 500,000 people are the victims of the Holodomor. But here's a reminder, there was a large epidemic of malaria and typhus and other illnesses that caused microtoxins. And one of the symptoms of microtoxins is being bloated, like your starving. Which means the increase of death rates at the time was caused not just by the famine, but by multiple different reasons. But it's obvious that the death rates from hunger were less than 500,000 people. And also, we can't forget about the fact that the majority of the politicians in Ukraine were Ukrainian. The chairman of the Central Executive Committee of the Ukrainian USSR, Ukrainian Grigory Petrovsky. The General Secretary of the Ukrainian Communist Party, Stanislav Korsior, a Pole. Secretary of the Central Committee, Panas Lubichenko, a Ukrainian. As you can obviously see by this list, Soviet Ukraine was ruled exclusively by Russia. I mean, all jokes aside, Ukrainians could say, well, those are not true Ukrainians. They were infected by the disease of Bolshevism that made them Russians and Soviets and made them betray their motherland and their people. They wanted to destroy Ukraine and ethnically cleanse all Ukrainians from it. Some questions come up. Like, why did Moldovians and Bulgarians suffer more from the famine than the Ukrainians did? I mean, you have to think, if the communists wanted to kill all Ukrainians, why did less of them die from the famine than from natural causes counting the epidemics? I mean, if the Soviet government's plan was to kill every single Ukrainian, why was it increasing the healthcare budget in Ukraine at the time? And why were they building new hospitals in Ukraine at the time? I mean, if they wanted to kill them all, why build new hospitals? And if the Soviet plan was to eradicate the Ukrainian culture, why did they build Ukrainian schools and hire Ukrainian teachers and fill the entire classrooms with students to learn the Ukrainian language? I guess the Bolsheviks just sucked at genocide in people. All of this aside, what was the reason for the famine? And there were multiple reasons for the famine that combined caused like a perfect storm of human death. One of those regions were wheat leaf rust, also known as brown rust, a fungal disease that makes wheat and barley unusable, and droughts and floods in regions of Ukraine that affected other areas in Eastern Europe as well. Western Ukraine that was part of Poland at the time was suffering from the same fate. The Polish newspaper Nowy Czas was saying that 80% of the households in that region were starving. Moldova, which was part of Romania at the time, had non-stop hunger riots due to the increase of price of bread by 100% and the fact that bread disappeared off the market altogether. Increased price of grain was one of the main reasons of the famine. 
but not the only one. You see, during the collectivization, some farmers prefer to kill their livestock instead of having it become part of the collective. That was based on the idea, if it's not mine, no one else shall have it. But this I went backfired for the farmers, because they did not only kill the beef cattle, but also the livestock that walked on the fields. And that was another case for why the famine happened. Another reason why it happened was corruption and callousness that was in the collective farms in Ukraine at the time. Historian Kondrashin writes that about 40% of grain was lost during the harvest of 1942. You know, Ukrainians love to blame the Soviet government for the famine. But why do they never blame those slackers who killed their own cattle because they didn't want it to be collective property? Why would they blame those thieves who stole collective property for their own good? So we basically have many reasons for why the famine happened. That separately wouldn't have an effect of this side, but together had a big impact. And you have to ask yourself, when the Soviet government found out about this famine, what did it do? Did it continue selling grain to Europe because it needed money for industrialization? They did not care on how many Ukrainians had to die as long as it got profit. You see, when Stalin heard about the famine in Ukraine and other parts of the country, he immediately stopped deliveries of grain abroad. This was one of the reasons why the price of grain was so high in Eastern Europe at the time. And also, the Soviet Union started buying crops from Persia to help the devastated regions. And local authorities also played a large role to ease the situation at the time, like attaching kids of preschool age and school age to schools and giving them free school meals. All members of the Ukrainian Communist Party who were responsible for the famine were punished, including the General Secretary of the Communist Party of Ukraine, Kasyor, who was publicly executed. So according to the modern government of Ukraine, this is how a genocide looks like. You have to know that the term Holodomor was not invented by Ukrainians, but it was invented by the Germans. It was made by Joseph Goebbels in his speech Communism with the Mask Off, in which he talked about 6 million dead Ukrainians from a famine, the information that he got from a mysterious Soviet document, a propaganda attempt so absurd that nobody bought it. But after Germany was defeated, the idea of the Holodomor still lived on. But this time it was spread not by the Germans, but by the Americans and the British. The ideology of the Holodomor in the West was made by Robert Conquest and spread in the USSR during Perestroika. And later, an American commission led by James Mace acknowledged the Holodomor as a genocide. But based on what we covered in this video, it's obvious that there was no genocide, but a famine a memory of which is used as a political tool against Russia, as well as it had been used as a propaganda tool against communist and socialist movements and parties around the world. And this nonsense is gladly spread by the elites in the West and in Ukraine for their own benefits. For modern Ukrainian elites, Holodomor is incredibly useful, because it helps them to hide away the fact of the Ukrainian poverty, inequality and corruption and pretend that the main problem of Ukraine is only Russia and not them. And by associating communism and socialism with only Russia, they could strangle workers' rights and destroy trade unions without a problem. And so they spread this propaganda that is believed mainly by young people who don't know any better. So let's not make idiots out of ourselves. Let's study facts, not myths. With Ryan the Russian with you, Please like this video and subscribe to this channel, as well as click the notification button to not to miss the next time I upload.